absolute joy to be with you this morning, uh, not because it's my last Sunday, <laughs> but because it is a special occasion, and, and um, there was, uh, it wasn't very long ago that it felt, in terms of my health, that um, I wouldn't be able to share this special occasion with you, so I'm really thankful uh, for that also. Um, obviously, I'm sorry that we can't be together in our entirety as a worshipping congregation, uh, but I know that there will be many joining us online uh, as well this morning. Now, I think most of you will have attended worship since the coronavirus restrictions were applied, but if, the, if you haven't, just to remind you uh, that um, you're asked to remain where you are uh, until you're uh, invited to come forward uh, at uh, the distribution of Holy Communion. Um, and if you space yourself uh, alongside those in your queue, uh, standing please at the altar rail uh, to receive um, Holy Communion. When we get to the end of the service, if you remain in your queues until uh, the church warden or a site person uh, invites you to uh, leave and leave via uh, the uh, exit uh, nearest to the pulpit. Uh, I always knew today was going to be a challenging day, a difficult day for me, but it does help um, seeing if you like a posse of bandits takes away some of their high class bandits, of course. Uh, and I have to add that because, of course, Norman's glittering at me, uh, looking like something out of Ed Samuel's window. <laughs> So uh, that helps tremendously, but as, as well as, you know, um, as that, it is a, um, a day to give thanks to God for the uh, past chapter of our time together in this parish uh, and for what we've been given um, by his many blessings during that time and to pray uh, for the next chapter uh, of uh, life and for God's gifts uh, in the life of this parish. It's an emotional day for me, and there's every chance I might blow. But if I, if I do, don't worry about it. My grandmother always told me that my eyes were too near to my brother. <laughs> so don't worry about that. Anyway, let's just take a few moments quiet now and consciously bring ourselves into God's presence and prepare to meet with him in word and sacrament. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. I'd just like to extend a welcome to all those of you who are joining us online this morning to our parish Eucharist here at London Parish Church. It's lovely to have you with us, and I do feel hope that you will feel uh, part of the service and also be able to make your spiritual communion um, at 
the point of the administration. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and sacrament, let us call to mind and confess our sins. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour. In what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand for the glory. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. As we remain standing, let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than either we desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things of which we are not worthy to ask but through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sit for the Epistle. The Holy Spirit works in strange ways, or mysterious ways, his wonders to perform, and this morning the epistle from Paul's letter to the Romans is so apt and if I was to um, ask for inspiration to uh, leave you with uh, a, a message uh, I can't think of any better words than the words that are written by Paul um, in these, um, these passages to the Romans. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honour. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend
extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not overcome, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up the cross and follow me. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. Amen. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you are a stumbling block to me. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world, but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the Gospel of the Lord. The name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. I want to begin by dispelling the myth, a myth that is around in this parish often, and that that Margaret doesn't listen to what you tell her. <laughs> she often uh, appears like, you know, whatever you're saying is going completely over her head, and you just leave it to God's grace that it gets there somehow. Uh, and unbelievably, it does. And I have evidence for that, because 
when I came, well, before I came to the parish, I wrote uh, a letter for the parish magazine introducing ourselves. And I'd chosen a passage from uh, John's Gospel, uh, chapter 16, as, uh, if you like, my inspiration. Uh, do you remember it, Margaret? <laughs> it says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Now obviously Margaret had read that and on a very cold February night in 2014 I sat here with Anne waiting to be inducted as vicar and there was a lovely uh, floral arrangement here in front of me, and in that, a lovely, juicy bunch of grapes. As well. <laughs> Which for February is something, isn't it? Fruit. But that fruit didn't last because by the middle of the week I'd eaten them all. <laughs> Every time I went past, I'd have um, a, a little nibble at a few more as well. Well, I knew this coming here to Lund would be very different very quickly, very different from where I come from, because I come from a very uh, large town centre parish with an average congregation on a Sunday of nearing 200 and uh, a pulpit, an Italian wine goblet pulpit that was about 12 feet in the air and you were more than six foot above, above contradiction. Uh, and uh, this felt so different, but it felt so right as well. I did not choose you, but you chose me. And that first week was confirmed that it would be a different experience when I sat on a hay bale in the barn uh, at Grace Meyer Farm uh, with a piece of cake in one hand and a mug of coffee in the other watching this poor cow have a caesarean right there in front of me. And I thought, yep, yeah, it's different than my table. <laughs> and then later that week, it was the first meeting of the PCC, and that completely confirmed it was different. <laughs> it was like being back, it was like being in Dibley. <laughs> Of the big, and all the characters in that Dibley PCC were there as well. I think the only thing that was missing was the Bob Rhythm Courgette sponge cake. Uh, but I'm sure that was going to appear as well. Um, but there are so many examples, I think, today of fruit that will last, has last, and will continue to last in this parish fruit that has been grown by our efforts together in serving our Lord, um, both in worship here in this lovely church and in service uh, to the community as well. I think the first thing I, I have to think of is our worship together. Um, it's, it's grown into such a beautiful thing. Um, yeah, we still um, hold worship that is uh, solemn and uplifting, but also it's meaningful uh, and it's relaxed enough for people to feel that uh, it has relevance for their everyday lives. I always remember in the first few months of being here, so many times people say, oh, Father Giles didn't like that, or do that, oh, Father Giles doesn't like that. And to the point I said, where well, is Father Giles? I thought, I was the vicar here. Um, but obviously, um, a certain discipline of worship had been expected and achieved as well. And that's lovely, but at the end of the day, worship is there to serve God, not to serve human beings. And it's there for us to fulfil the only purpose that we were created for, and that is to worship God. And I believe we do that in such a beautiful way uh, each and every Sunday more so when we can all be here uh, together as well. So that's one of the fruits that I will leave giving thanks uh, to God for. I'll also be, be, be thankful for the fruit of our connections with the community. 
because they have grown so much in recent years and those are not just due to my efforts, they're due to your efforts as well. Lund Church is seen um, and um, acknowledged by the community as a, commu as a church for the community and uh, we've shown that in every possible way that we can um, and I pray that that uh, will continue as well. The fruits of our work with our young people I do hope will grow and one of the lovely um, uh, evidences of that has been the uh, creation uh, during my time of Lund Little Lambs and the way that that has grown and become so important uh, to so many uh, parents uh, as well as children as well and, and created real community uh, and I want to acknowledge the efforts that all those but particularly uh, Fran Tomlinson has put into, into that as well. The wonderful chaos of our children's liturgies. Uh, it, incredible, you know, I mean, Messy Church has got nothing on it. Uh, it's, it's wonderful, but it's meaningful and it's uplifting uh, and it brings together uh, all of God's people here of uh, different ages as well. Um, our lovely choir, I really look forward to coming back to visit um, and uh, to a time when once again uh, we can uh, join with our choir uh, at, in singing God's praise because it's one of the hardest things to sacrifice, uh, I think, is not being able to sing God's praises. And we're very blessed with um, the liturgical music that we're able to offer here and that's so, so much due to the commitment of the choir and not least Father Brian who has brought new life and vigour to uh, the choir uh, during his time as organist and <coughs> choir master as well. The Mother's Union, I think I must mention the Mother's Union, I think there's been a sea change in the Mother's Union and it's become a powerhouse of prayer for the parish. Uh, it has um, taken um, focus on important things in our society in terms of Christian family life and it's been a constant support uh, to the parish as well so that's another evidence of the growth of God's fruit, uh, fruit uh, that will last. Tea at St John's, if you've never been to it you've missed the treats, uh, bi-monthly tea at St John's <coughs> when um, a number of people who um, have very little other social contact come together um, and uh, enjoy the hospitality offered, but more than that, benefit from the fellowship uh, that Tea at St John's offers. Um, Learned Hobbycraft Group is another example of that. I think it's as much to do with fellowship and mutual support than it is uh, with uh, hobbies as well, uh, but it gives a focus for that. And then the recent uh, developments of Lexio Divina uh, and Christian meditation are real signs of the growth of God's kingdom here in this parish, offering people an opportunity uh, to encounter God in their lives, in their prayer life in new ways uh, that they hadn't uh, experienced before. But I think more than anything, it's been the shift in our relationships. I think Lund Church is, is uh, a very different church now to, than it was uh, to the church, the parish it was when I came. There's lots of good things still here that were there then, but essentially it's a church it's a worshipping community where everybody has the role to play. As St Paul says, uh, we are the body of Christ. And uh, every part of Christ's body has its role to play. Uh, the hand is dependent on the arm and the arm, I'm not going to give you a physiology lecture. Um, <laughs> but you know what I mean. 
And, and when I came, I think it's true to say that it was a bit exclusive. There was a stranglehold on what um, people were allowed to do and what they weren't, and it was restricted to a few people. Uh, and thankfully that's changed, uh, and I think that must be protected at all costs. But let's not uh, fall into the trap of wearing, um, you know, kind of rainbow-coloured spectacles all the time, because it's important, I think, to uh, be vigilant as well. And um, um, interregnums are a notorious time uh, for things to go wrong. I'm sure they won't here, uh, but they, they are. And there are time uh, when uh, we have to take extra care because uh, some people whose motives are not the right ones take opportunities such as theirs uh, to actually try to re-establish influence or control. The psalmist says, uh, the devil prowls about like a roaring lion, seeking who may, he may devour. Resist steadfast in the faith. Don't lose what we have gained together here in this parish um, at the cost of a power struggle uh, for a few. Keep hold of the belief and the God-given right for everybody uh, within this parish uh, to have their part and their role uh, and to play it as well. I know that Anne and I today, this morning, have hearts full of gratitude for our time here and for what you, each and every one of you, have meant to us. Um, you all know um, that in uh, 2017 we experienced one of the greatest um, sadnesses uh, that uh, a parent can um, experience when we lost our beloved son Richard and um, it was Holy Week in 2017 if you remember when he was diagnosed uh, with the esophageal cancer that five months later took his life and I honestly believe and Anne is of the same view as well that if God put us here for any reason, or if there was only one reason that God put us here, it was to be here to actually be given the strength to deal uh, with that loss and that grief. Because believe me, it's you good people who helped us uh, to come through that and to uh, continue to do that. And I know that some of you in this congregation have experienced that same very painful loss and therefore that allowed you to actually stand alongside us in a way uh, that um, was very special to us as well. But never think that we are not aware and not grateful for uh, the love and the care and the support that was given to us at that time in so many different ways. And, um, it, it, um, that, that really kind of allowed us uh, the ability uh, to actually um, cope with that. So thank you. And of course, um, we leave a very special part of us here at Lund in terms of our son's grave, um, which, if nothing else, will give us a reason uh, to come back and see you all from time to time. Uh, but also, it strengthens our hearts to know uh, that he, uh, his physical body lies here in a place that is so loved uh, and so well maintained also. I've got to say a, a mention, I've got to make a mention of the support uh, that I've received, particularly from the wardens. They have been absolutely brilliant um, and they've put up with a lot, uh, but they've, they've been unstinting in their support. Um, and, you know, I'll always be grateful uh, for uh, the love and the support and the guidance. I think I've experienced at Lund probably one of the best PCC treasurers 
uh, I've ever experienced. I wish I'd had him at, at Whitehaven, uh, where we dealt with a lot more money than we do here. But with far more, we deal with this with far more skill uh, than they did there. So I do want to say thank you to Jeff. Uh, I want to say thank you to Fran for her role as PC Secretary. She always thinks she, did, she doesn't do a good job, but she does. Uh, and she's uh, incredible the way that she uh, gives her time uh, to so many things as a busy working wife of four young children. I've also got to say she's the dishiest PC Secretary <laughs> <laughs> that I've ever known as <laughs> and to the PCC also, but also to Father Brian for being such a loyal friend and colleague um, and for the um, way that he has continued to contribute uh, to the life of the parish as well. So today is a day to give thanks to God. It's a day um, to look to the past and thank God for all that has been but also to look to the future and say yes in a positive way to all that God has in store for you as well and for his church here in this wonderful place. So finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Amen. Let us stand now to affirm our faith. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sin he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promise through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us as we pray in faith. 
Father, we pray for your church throughout the world, by her many names and different expressions. Today, we particularly pray for your church here in this parish of Lund. We thank you for all those who have served you in this place in the years past. We thank you for those who will serve you in the years to come. We pray for your continued blessings and growth of fruit, fruit that will last, of your witness and your service here. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for the world and for its needs. As we continue to live with the uncertainty and restrictions of the pandemic, we pray for all those whose lives have been affected by it economically or emotionally. We pray for the world and particularly for those parts of the world where there is poverty and real need, and in addition, the effects and damages of COVID. Pray especially at this time for the people of the Lebanon, as they seek to find some reordering of life there, following the dreadful explosion as well as coping with the increase in coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. we pray for ourselves, for our families and friends. We pray for God's blessing upon our school as it seeks to Welcome the children back this coming week. Pray for all who are isolated and housebound. We pray that we may seek to both make community and to serve community in whatever way is possible. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. we pray for those who are sick at this time, in body, mind or spirit. We remember any who are known to us personally and pray for God's healing spirit to be upon them. Christopher Spacey, for Rosemary Cartwright, for Peter Squires, we pray for those who are awaiting surgery, all those who are awaiting the results of investigation. God will give them peace and strength at this time of anxiety. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> we give thanks for the lives of those who have gone before us, especially those whose of whose lives are marked with the sign of faith and those whose faith is known to God alone. For any that we know and love and see no longer. We give thanks for the promise of eternal life and pray for the grace 
begin to live that light in the that life in the light of the gospel here on earth. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. So now, gathering together all our prayers, we ask Mary, the Mother of our Lord, to intercede for us as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We stand to share the peace. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Wise and gracious God, you spread a table before us. Nourish your people with the word of life and the bread of heaven. Amen. We stand and turn to page 19 for our prayer of thanksgiving. The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. From sunrise to sunset, this day is holy. For Christ is risen from the tomb, and scatters the darkness of death with light that will not fade. This day the risen Lord walks with your gathered people, unfolds for us your word, and makes himself known in the breaking of the bread. And though the night will overtake this day, you summon us to live in endless light, the never-ceasing Sabbath of the Lord. And so, with choirs of angels and with all the heavenly host, we proclaim your glory and join their unending song of praise. 
holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes, and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St John the Evangelist, and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace.
Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
to include in the intercessions that today uh, Janet and Grenville are um, giving thanks to God for 45 years of uh, married life together um, and today is the wedding anniversary so we join with them in giving thanks to Almighty God and congratulating them and wishing them every blessing for the future. Let us pray. God of all mercy, in this Eucharist you have set aside our sins and given us your healing. Grant that we who are made whole in Christ may bring that healing to this broken world. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Would you please stand? <laughs> of his countenance upon you, and give you his peace and his strength. And may Almighty God bless you, 
the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.